following government announcement of the legalization of the cultivation of cannabis for medicinal purposes, stakeholders who among them include medical experts and farmers' representatives have shared suggestions on how best this should be done. On this week's edition of News In-Depth, Masao Somukwaya will also look at the potential economic benefit of cannabis. I'm your host, Febi Sakala. Stay tuned. Among the many things that grow in the ground, cannabis stands out both in good and bad taste. In Zambia, cannabis is considered a major contributor to the drug problems in the country, which is evident in the cultivation and abuse of the plant, a situation highlighted by the Drug Enforcement Commission, DEC, on their website. A DEC brochure indicates that cannabis abuse is more among young people and has seemingly increased over the past years. Even though Zambia has had relaxed laws on the cultivation of cannabis for medicinal purposes, cannabis cultivation has remained a crime in the country unless the grower has a farming license from the Ministry of Health. However, the Ministry has not allowed anybody to cultivate the plant for any purpose. According to the current legal provisions, if caught growing cannabis, the offender may be given a fine of not less than 500 penalty units or sentenced to up to 10 years in prison depending on circumstances of the offence. There are several types of cannabis grown in different parts of the world. Zambia has three common cannabis varieties, namely sativa, ruderalysis, and indica. Of these, the most common is cannabis sativa. The plant is also known by its local names in different tribes such as Chamba, Mbanje, Dowo, Luwanje, Iwange, Jamba, and Matokwani, among others. Despite the drug abuse controversy that cannabis is known for, it is also referred to as the magic plant because of its massive medicinal properties. From the foregoing, the Zambian government made a historical decision to allow for the cultivation of cannabis for medicinal purposes. Government through the Ministry of Information announced in a statement that a special cabinet meeting held on 4th December 2019 gave approval for the cultivation of cannabis in principle to a ministerial committee comprising of the Ministers of Justice, Defence, Home Affairs, Finance, National Development Planning, Commerce, Trade and Industry, Agriculture and Health. The Ministry of Health was tasked to coordinate and provide overall leadership on the matter. It's, a, it's an eye-opener to people you know, who didn't uh, know the other side of marijuana because uh, obviously the education bit of it has been one-sided. Uh, people just know that marijuana makes you run mad, you know, things like that. When in fact, you know, it's a very, very uh, potent herb for medicinal use. Green Party President Peter Sinkamba has been one of the consistent voices who have advocated for the legalization of cannabis in the country for a number of years now. Mr. Sinkamba is happy that government has decided to finally legalize the cultivation of cannabis. It's not like our uh, business model uh, because government has left out the issue of uh, industrial cannabis. Uh, but we think that even with the medical uh, cannabis uh, component and the export aspect, uh, we should be able to make uh, a lot of uh, uh, progress as a nation. Aaron Mujajati, a renowned physician, received the news with excitement. Dr. Mujajati is keen to see how the country will move to implement this pronouncement. I'd like to thank our brother, um, Mr. Peter Sinkam, uh, for just having the courage to bring this issue to the fore, um, especially at a time when it wasn't very popular to, to say something like that. And, um, and when he came out, I quickly went to look at the literature. It took me a while to, to really look at the literature. And that's why I decided that, you know what, I'm going to lend my voice to this. And throughout the time, we were pushing for legalization of marijuana. Of course, people started thinking that uh, Mujajat is a member of a Green Party and whatever. You know, we, we need to move away from that. I mean, if an idea is revolutionary, it's revolutionary. The Zambia Medical Association, ZMA, has also welcomed Cabinet's position on the cultivation of cannabis. There are medical benefits indeed of, 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 of marijuana and, uh, and I think that as a, as a nation we need to 
take advantage of those. We have some members of the, our communities who suffer ailments that, uh, in fact, may be amenable to treatment uh, by use of medicinal marijuana. For Francis Mopeta, a physician at the University Teaching Hospitals, the development will open more opportunities for research on cannabis. Because of the tight uh, laws um, surrounding marijuana, I think we have been unable to move in terms of research. And, uh, you know, research is what actually gives us answers. So if we're unable to find answers to the questions that we have through research, then uh, it becomes very difficult for us to have all the knowledge we need. For National Union of Small Scale Farmers, Director General Noel Simu Konda, the impact of this very important development on cannabis should be examined critically. The characteristic of this crop is what needs to be first be analyzed, the, the effect to have to the, to the environment, to the health of this country, on extreme external factors will be paramount to see that this project is a success. The Center for Trade Policy and Development, CTPD, says the move to allow for the cultivation of cannabis is long overdue. Executive Director Isaac Mwaipopo is however concerned that government has not provided a clear roadmap on the matter. Uh, government through the Ministry of Health might want to consider setting up a task force that can be ahead the process of uh, formulating uh, guidelines. Uh, there might be need to put up a framework that clearly spells out in terms of how this crop will be uh, produced and then also measures have to be taken into consideration in terms of uh, the processing aspect. Uh, we might be looking at it from an export uh, perspective but uh, if we don't take adequate measures we might also have uh, challenges in terms of growing the actual crop. For the Zambia National Farmers Union, ZNFU, the misinformation on what has been allowed for cultivation is worrying. I don't know whether it's deliberate or it's, it's, or it, or it's just uh, lack of knowledge about the two, uh, the two crops. There are actually two crops. There is um, industrial hemp, uh, which is called cannabis sativa, and there is marijuana, which is cannabis indica. There are two. Indica and sativa are species of cannabis. The two share similar features but have specific and distinct differences. Cannabis sativa is mostly associated with hemp plants found in Europe and parts of Asia where it was cultivated for its fiber and seeds. On the other hand, cannabis indica refers to the psychoactive varieties discovered in India where it was harvested for its seed, fiber and hashish production. This is the type of cannabis that is common in Zambia on the black market. Although the cannabis varieties consumed largely stem from cannabis indica, both terms are used erroneously. Botanists say distinct elements of the two plants, such as variations in height, branching patterns and the shape of the leaves, are used to identify the different strains of the plant. Indica plants are shorter than sativa plants, and they have a woody stalk, not a fibrous one. Indica plants also grow more quickly than sativa plants. Cannabis. Um, sativa, which is industrial hemp, does not contain psychoactive substances. Okay, it has a negligible amount of uh, uh, tetra cannabis, so to speak, uh, or THC, uh, in, in 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 their terms. It has got about 0.3 percent content of THC. If you compare it to marijuana. Marijuana has up to 7 to 20 percent content of THC, meaning marijuana has got a substance that can alter a person's mind. Okay, while um, cannabis sativa, which is industrial hemp, has got 0.3 percent, which is negligible. Countries across the world are moving to legalize the cultivation of cannabis because of its versatility in form of medication. The medicinal value of this crop is one of the reasons why Zambia has decided to change its stance on the plant. Research has found that cannabis has the potential to help with a variety of medical conditions such as chronic pain, nausea in cancer patients, anxiety and epilepsy. 
for the medicinal um, uses that uh, have been recognized. Um, for example, to treat chronic pain, uh, for example, to treat some forms of epilepsy with convulsions, and also to prevent nausea and vomiting in patients who are on chemotherapy, that is treatment for cancer, uh, and other such uses. Cannabis has hundreds of chemical compounds that create a unique harmony of effects, which is primarily led by cannabinoids, CBD, and tetrahydrocannabinoids, THC. When taken raw, THC may have severe effects on one's cognitive system or reasoning. THC is a substance primarily responsible for the psychoactive effects of cannabis. The effects of THC are believed to be moderated by the presence of other compounds of the plant, such as cannabinoids. Cannabinoids, CBD, on the other hand, has lesser effects on the user. This is because it is known for interacting with specific receptors located within the central nervous system. The CBD causes interactions to occur in the part of the human brain that affects memory, cognition, and the region associated with feelings of reward. This also spreads the area covering pain perception. Most of the drugs that are derived marijuana tend to manipulate or utilize the properties of CBD as opposed to C T THC. Now, THC, of course, has been shown that when taken in overdose, can actually lead to, you know, a certain, uh, you know, feeling of euphoria, which actually can be interpreted in many ways. Two, it also capable of inducing nausea and vomiting. All right, but all in all, if we look at CBD, it has got a lot of effects like that relief from anxiety, pain, and then also countering the effects of THC, which is uh, reducing nausea and vomiting. So the issue of medical marijuana is not to utilize the plant in its raw form. Dr. Mjajati and Dr. Mpeta also feel that authorities should engage traditional healers as they formulate guidelines on the matter. Call Dr. Vongo, sit him down and ask him, you know, how have you been using marijuana and how have you been applying it? Uh, it's, it's, it's a new area. There's no harm in discovering new things from others who've been doing it longer than us. Because as we work in hospitals, we've not been using marijuana for medicinal purposes. But our colleagues who've been working in traditional medicine have been using it for a very long time. These are available resources that can actually provide our people with cheaper and alternative medicines. The traditional healers are on the other hand warmed up to the idea of using cannabis for medicinal purposes. Cannabis or marijuana has been used by our ancestors from time immemorial, and so its medicinal values are vast. There's many medicinal values, many, more than I can describe here, but this is just one person representing our association. Mm. But 40,000 um, of us can bring in a lot of ideas. So we need to work together with the Minister of Health. We need to work with the government of the day. Another reason why cannabis is becoming popular across the world is because of its high economic value. As of 10th March 2020, Zambia's number one revenue earner, copper, fetched $5,552,000 per ton at the World Center for Industrial Metals Trading, the London Metal Exchange. On the other hand, a ton of cannabis cost as much as $18 million in Washington, D.C., as indicated on the Weed Index website. According to Forbes, the global cannabis industry is estimated to be worth $7.7 .7 billion and is projected to grow sevenfold, hitting $31.4 billion by 2021. This is why the Center for Policy, Trade and Development is confident that the country will reap benefits from cannabis. It does have uh, the potential to contribute to our uh, exports and uh, we're actually a country that is in desperate need of uh, improving our export uh, base. Although the other thing that we need to take into consideration is the fact that there are a number of countries that are going into the space uh, to uh, cultivate uh, this crop. So that means that eventually we might even get to a point where uh, uh, it might uh, become less uh, profitable. So as we are taking advantage of uh, such in terms of thinking of the export uh, potential that it possesses, uh, we might also want to specialize. Probably think about the medicinal benefits that it provides and exploit that opportunity for the benefit of our population. 
the price of cannabis in Tokyo is the highest in the world at $32.66 per gram. And the Green Party president is optimistic that the country will financially benefit from the lucrative nature of cannabis. Mr. Sinkamba is on record of projecting that Zambia has the potential to make over $30 billion annually from cannabis if it plays its cards right. The government is in very, very serious stress financially. So because of the developments within the mining sector, the energy issues to do with climate change and the load shedding. So we need, we need uh, to drive the economy very quickly uh, and the, the only way out at the moment is to focus on the can cannabis uh, business so that it's able to make up for the uh, copper issues and the load shedding issues. Amid the high expectations, there's a point of concern raised by the CTPD. If you look at a country like Zambia, oftentimes when we talk about investments, we've often thought of investments from uh, 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 the coming in of uh, capital coming through from other countries. Uh, we've often thought of uh, investments uh, from a foreign perspective. Uh, rarely have we looked at uh, possibilities of us uh, taking advantage of resources that we have. So if we are to benefit from uh, the cultivation of a crop such as marijuana, first of all, we need to look at uh, what can happen within. Do we have uh, entities, do we have individuals that would have the resources to invest into such? And uh, if we have the resources, how conducive is the environment for them to actually access uh, finance or maybe for them to do the actual production? On what may be considered controversial, Michael Zulu wants the legalization to extend to recreational use. Mr. Zulu, who was once jailed for illegally being in possession of cannabis, says doing so will attract more tourists in the country. Other countries today, my brother, are having an influx of tourists because of recreational use of marijuana. You know, people have used marijuana for recreation ever since, and uh, some of us have used it for spiritual purposes, religious purposes. So, you know, all those are avenues in which, you know, people can use the, the, the plant. I know abuse is, uh, is high on the agenda, but you know, everything is abused. Alcohol is abused today, but we still have those control measures which make it possible for the country at large to, to benefit at that level. But other stakeholders are opposed to having cannabis legalized for recreational use. The use of recreational marijuana is, um, is, is, is strictly um, um, wrong in our view and uh, people should not be encouraged uh, people should uh, should abstain uh, from using that uh, that type of recreational marijuana the youth will really be abused no wonder the government was resisting this because of the abuse that cannabis has been exposing the youth to when they smoke it and when they use it it's a drug uh, a problem. It will be a very, very big problem with uh, DC. The Zambia Medical Association has suggested that the growing of this plant should be done under strict supervision in high security military farms to be overseen by the military. And there must be processes put in place, uh, people licensed to, uh, you know, to, to cultivate and process as well as export. And if that process is not followed, uh, then we might, uh, we might, we might lose the the, you know, the benefits that may in fact arise from that pronouncement. The initial cultivation should be monitored closely. If they want to start first under military, uh, military arrangements or condonments, so be it for as long as the initial trials are going to begin. That is okay. But others like Michael Zulu feel putting restrictions on the growing of cannabis would disadvantage ordinary Zambians such as small-scale farmers. Uh, let peasant farmers especially, you know, grow the, the plant because obviously they have the knowledge, they have the know-how, they've been planting it already and uh, I think they can be empowered in such a manner that, you know, if uh, it's in a secure uh, location, you know, still let the peasant farmers be uh, put in clusters, you know, uh, and, you know, let them be part of the business. The Zambia National Farmers Union is of the view that cannabis should be freely grown like any other crop such as maize. 
if I, if I want to cultivate uh, wheat is a charge. No. It's, it's like any other crop. This is like any other crop. The only difference maybe is that this one has got high value contents. To the contrary, the small scale farmers union say the growing of this green high value plant should be controlled, adding that segments such as small scale farmers can participate through cooperatives. Well, let's have the military and the, 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 the general public in one fora. I'll still go back to that. Not until we exhaustively look at this manner in a manner, in a way that is going to benefit this country. Is the farm going to be fenced, war fenced, or can people just walk in there and get it at night and abuse it? Mm -hmm. So the farmers who are going to be involved, they must be carefully selected and properly fortified. This is what we can advise. It is, however, important to clarify that government has not outlawed the existing laws governing the cultivation, sale, or ultimate use of cannabis. In short, the cultivation, consumption, and sale of cannabis remain prohibited under the current laws. Therefore, stakeholders are calling for amendments to the current law to respond to the new pronouncement. The punitive nature of these laws, can we review them? So that we can open up conversation. Because we are now, um, you see, we cannot give with one hand and take with the other. Is what I'm trying to say. Um, but by that I mean that um, what if what if uh, we declared an amnesty? Okay, and said to ourselves, everyone who is behind bars because of marijuana-related uh, crimes, release them. I don't think it's necessary to create criminals out of uh, just ordinary citizens who are using innocently and uh, using, not abusing, the herb. For drug uh, addicts, how do you incarcerate a patient? Because that is a patient now. Okay, So we need uh, to start looking at uh, rehab centers, you know, youth-friendly information points where, you know, youths are able to freely discuss marijuana. Dr. Mjajati and Mr. Sinkamba have advised government to come up with a special institution which will manage all cannabis affairs in the country. Given an opportunity, Mr. Sinkamba is ready to lead the institution. If given an opportunity to head the institution as a vision carrier for this uh, um, legalization idea, uh, obviously I'll be ready to, to run it as an institution, that, but I have said it should be, shouldn't be a, a, under a ministry, it should be a special project uh, in the office of the president. Um, and then uh, with, with the, um, the drivers from government being the military. We need the equivalent of an FRA for marijuana, but this is an agency that uh, should be able to uh, both uh, buy from the local people and that's the agency through which we all sell uh, marijuana wherever we want to send it abroad. The Ministry of Health and other government departments who are reached for input on this matter, such as the Drug Enforcement Commission and the Zambian Medicines Regulatory Authority declined to comment. They said this is because government is still carrying out consultations and formulating guidelines on the legalization of the cultivation, processing and export of cannabis. Amid high expectations, the nation is tasked to be patient in order to see how this new policy will be implemented. Well, that's all we had for you on the program. Be sure to join us next week at the same time. I've been your host, Febi Sakala, saying goodbye and God bless.